April. Diversity, equity, and inclusion programs received a great deal of attention after the death of George Floyd in 2020. More recently, the programs have faced growing criticism with major companies pulling back. What should Indiana's role be in DEI programs and what would you keep the state, would you keep the state the DEI officer? I'm going to start with you, Mr. Chambers. Um, as it relates to keeping the DEI office open, I don't believe that's uh, something that should be part of a, a government entity. So the answer is no, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe that's the case. This is about, in our business, I've been in business 40 years, this is about creating a, a level playing field for all people to apply and then hiring the best. We need to drive profitability in our company. Uh, and, and to do that, you need to hire the best. So it's about a level playing field, welcoming all, but hiring the best to drive profit and growth in any organization. I don't believe it belongs in a government entity. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. Ms. Crouch. DEI is divisive, it's exclusionary, and it is absolutely not inclusive. And so the Supreme Court last year said the racial preferences were unconstitutional for university admissions. And so the reasoning would be that DEI is unconstitutional also. No state dollars should be dedicated to this. But if we're really going to talk about diversity, Let's talk about how we can hire more individuals with disabilities. In September, as the chair of the Intellectual and Developmental Disability Task Force, I visited companies here in Indiana who had the program to hire those Hoosiers with disabilities because they have a 70% unemployment rate and we have 100,000 jobs that are unfilled. So let's give opportunities to those Hoosiers who have disabilities. Not only will they fill jobs, but they will lift up the workforce and add meaning to the workplace. Thank you, Ms. Crouch. Mr. Doden, what should Indiana's role be in DEI programs? Under my leadership as governor, we will not have the office of DEI. Uh, I do not believe in virtue signaling. Uh, I've been taught since I was a kid that those who talk the most often do the least. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build teams and, and we're gonna solve problems. And when you build teams and solve problems, you cannot have groupthink. You have to have people from all different kinds of backgrounds, thought processes, ideas, but you have to have the best people at the table. And we're going to try to build the best team possible with our 30 agency heads. In fact, I'm the only candidate on stage that says every agency head will have to reapply for their job. And then once we begin to solve problems, uh, what you have to do is lead by example. And we're going to lead by example. Thank you, Mr. Doe. Mr. Braun, you have 60 seconds. This is a no-brainer freedom and opportunity. You do not need anything else that forces outcomes. My freedom and opportunity agenda clearly says how we're going to do that in about 12 different arenas. And if we do that and give a level playing field for everyone, you get rid of that need. That's mostly crafted in the halls of big government and big business. And if you're not an outspoken critic against that, you're going to end up getting policies like that that we've even embraced in a place like Indiana. So it begged the question, how did we get there? One of the reasons I think that you've got to be more attentive to what goes on in your own state is because that creeps in. If you start listening to only the biggest players, you're going to sometimes do things that are counterproductive. That's how we got there. You're going to have to have somebody that's willing to turn it around and have a plan that benefits everyone. Thank you, Mr. Braun. Mr. Hill, what should Indiana's role be in DEI programs? Well, I'm glad that all my opponents have jumped on the bandwagon because months ago I came out with a proposal that on my first day in office we would eliminate the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and we maintain that. Uh, it's interesting to me that the lieutenant governor is suggesting that it, uh, uh, DEI is, is uh, divisive, but it's her administration uh, that has put this position in place. Um, Mr. Chambers also is uh, critical of DEI, but his company has ESG, which is corporate DEI, all over its website. Uh, we need to get away from this check the box mentality that suggests that we've done something about race when in actuality we've put up walls. Uh, diversity is a wonderful thing, provided that you don't get in the way of excellence. Inclusion is a fantastic thing, provided that you don't uh, give away to competence. And equity is a wonderful thing, as long as you don't give up fair play. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Ms. Crouch, you were referenced. You have 30 seconds to respond. Yeah. Mr. Chambers, would you like to respond? 
listen, I mean, Curtis hasn't signed the front of a paycheck for 40 years like I have, you know, and you know, we hire the best. Um, we, we have a level playing field, we hire the best, we drive for profit, and, and that's been proven out for 40 years because we've grown that business, and, and that's, what, that's how I'd run the state. I think the state needs a CEO.